Right, so I have a plane, a cube that's been stretched, and a cube that has the top deleted out of it. And I have three um, pins and a ball. Okay. All right, to start the dynamic functionality, you first need to select the object and you go into your dynamics menu not your in dynamics but your dynamics menu and there is a section here called rigid and soft bodies and as you can see there's there is create active rigid body and create passive rigid body so select the bowling ball and we say create active and I'm going to accept all the defaults except I'm going to change the mass to something a little heavier um, let's reset and maybe give it a a mass of five bowling balls are pretty heavy so uh, create okay and if we run go to the beginning and play it nothing happens well didn't we just make this a rigid body shouldn't something be happening I, I you know I, you can't keyframe it now uh, but what's happening is there's nothing there's no forces or uh, anything acting upon it so once you create it uh, next thing we want to go to is go to this fields um, actually while we're at it I'm gonna go ahead and select these pins and do the same thing create active rigid body and this time let's make these 0.5 they're a bit lighter than the ball maybe 0.8 I don't want them too light we may have to come adjust that later all right so let's see what happens. Play, nothing happens. All right, now we want to uh, select all of these, and we want to apply a gravity field. Go to the field, gravity, and uh, I'm just going to accept the defaults and apply. And now let's see what happens. All right, we have something happening now. So uh, the ball is not touching the floor, and so uh, but these are now animated uh, according to that field, that force, which is gravity. So we play that, but it goes straight through the floor. What's up with that? Well, the floor has no physics properties yet. Uh, we have to designate it as something that will respond to physics or other objects, and that's where that other type of uh, rigid body comes into play. You have a body uh, that we don't necessarily want it to respond to gravity but we want something that is a, a rigid body to be affected by it and that's a passive rigid body. So all of these things we want to interact. Uh, if the pin hits the side we want it to have a collision. If the ball hits the floor uh, so we want all of these to be passive rigid bodies. So I'm going to create passive rigid bodies on all of those. Uh, and now when we begin it, and I'll take this up a little higher so you can see. So now it interacts with the floor. And uh, it bounces. And all of that is due to... Uh, different properties of the the ball its mass its bounciness the friction and also uh, physics properties of the ground plane itself and once you cr make it into a, a rigid body you can find those in the attribute editor and I can click rigid body 6 and I can see uh, I can make it active from here right now it's not but uh, you see the friction bounciness and uh, that sort of thing different properties of your rigid body uh, so if we can't keyframe the ball now uh, how do we get it to move well in its rigid body attributes we can set a, an initial velocity we can change its friction and bounciness and but I want to go to initial settings to give it an initial velocity in this direction which looks like it's negative x uh, we have positive x going this way and negative x going this way. Uh, so let's give it a ne of a negative five. All right, and that should go directly in this 
in this negative x direction. So let's see what happens there. So because of the mass, uh, it doesn't look like that really carry it that far. So let's change this to maybe uh, 200. See if we can get something rolling now. So we change the initial velocity, and now it, it indeed worked, but it went in the wrong direction. It went in positive x, and we need to go up in negative x. So we just put a negative sign here. Did that not take? All right, let's try that again. There we go. And that looked pretty fast, and it looks like I missed. Uh, my, <laughs> I'm a terrible bowler. I, I missed the pins completely. That that looks a bit fast, especially because these are a lot lighter. So we could probably get away with. And, th and this is going to be. Let's try 50. This is going to be experimental. Let's uh, move the ball over so it actually hits something this time. All right, it's coming down, and there we go. We got a now. This is something that's kind of important uh, when dealing with uh, rigid bodies. I set this box to be a rigid body just like I did the rails, but they're going straight through. Uh, what gives, right? Uh, what, what's going on? Well, collisions, first of all, a face has a front and a back side. Uh, and when the physics engine is dealing with collisions, it's always going to deal with the outside or the direction of the surface normal. Now, by default, you don't see surface normals, but surface normal just designate which is the inside and which is the outside of a face. And you could view those if I can find them. Uh, let's, let's see if we can go into show, see if you see anything with surface normals. Um, maybe object display I'm looking for something that says view normals face normals here we go so you see them you see these little green uh, sticks and that's just pointing to the outside direction so if I select this I guess it's not doing it universally. I'd have to select those and display face normals. Yeah, so these are all, you see these are uh, shooting up there. But these are also shooting out. Well, when this falls onto the inside of that box, that's the inside face, which does not respond to collisions. So in order, to this for this box to catch those pins we're going to have to reverse the normal direction or in so it thinks that the inside of the box is the outside of the box um, and that's an oversimplification but basically what we need to do is go over into our polygons menu normals and we can reverse our normals and when we did that now you see the normals are facing the inside of the box instead of the outside of the box and now if we rewind and play that box should catch things now now uh, I think maybe the mass or the velocity of my ball may be a little fast here so uh, let's make these pins a little heavier um, I may have to do them one at a time. Let's just give them a mass of one. This one a mass of one. And this one a mass of one. And maybe our ball. Give it a mass of three. And that give the ball initial velocity of something a little less than 50. Maybe 35. Or we could just lengthen out. I guess that makes sense too. We could uh, make our box bigger here. Whoa. Uh, 
And let's see what that looks like. But what I'm hoping you you see here is uh, it's it's not that difficult to set up a rigid body animations. You just designate something as a rigid body, and then you need to designate your passive body objects that uh, will retain it, such as the floor and any rails or containers, and then you apply forces. And active bodies will react with other active bodies, such as the pins. Um, but uh, we're and these are responding to gravity as well but I went ahead and set them on the plane and uh, and there's all different types of uh, fields that you can put on them uh, uh, you can play around with the different forces and begin to really gain a lot of control over your rigid bodies but they're pretty cool I really like how they self calculate especially the collisions and, and things like that so let's test it one more time after changing the attributes we change the uh, initial velocity of the ball and uh, the, the weight and let's see if everything's contained now in our bin down here yeah it's a lot slower there we go so that was that is how you would use uh, Maya's physics engine to create uh, an animation based on on a rigid body collisions and uh, hope that's helpful and that you can use that in your project if, if there's a place for it and uh, that's it for this tutorial